you're going to see going on in the control here is also the same as what's going on on that panel inside the machine. We're calling it the Compass Control Panel. Compass stands for Complete Operation Maintenance Performance and Security System. So I'm going to take you through each one of those things and I'll show you how it works and then Greg's going to show you how it actually works on the machine and what happens. This is our little simulator. You turn the machine on. It'll go through a little boot up sequence. It shows a unlock symbol. That's the security system part. I'll get that to the end. This is the, what the screen looks like. It's a really nice color screen. Uh, got has very good contrast. It's got five main icons. And these are your five corresponding buttons for those icons. So we'll start off with the first button here. That's your auto idle and your economy mode. So first off with auto idle, the default for that is on. What auto idle does, we're gonna demonstrate right here. When you don't touch the controls for about three seconds, after about three seconds, it'll automatically go to low idle. So we'll show you that real quick and you'll be able to hear it. So with the economy mode, or with auto idle on, it'll automatically do that. Now if you hit the joysticks, it goes automatically back up to the original engine speed. So that's auto engine idle. Saves fuel and it also makes it quieter and easier to talk. Economy mode is a new thing for us. Or when you turn economy mode on and hit OK, it'll tell you work mode change and economy mode is on. You'll be able to hear it when Greg has the engine revved up with auto, in, auto idle off. When economy mode is turned on, the engine goes to a lower setting, and in that setting you'll be able to save about 20% fuel. Now what Greg's going to do is he's going to take economy mode off, and you're going to hear the engine rev back up. Take, uh, take economy mode off. higher setting. That difference in setting, you still get good productivity because we have load sensing hydraulics and we have really good cycle times. You're just saving yourself about 20% fuel. If the owner wants to lock the machine into that economy mode, he can do that, but the operators still think that they're at full idle. The next thing here, uh, this is our, our quick coupler control. So what I'm going to do just real quick is show you how you do that. When you hit that button, you then can unlock the back wedge. That's your primary locking device on the quick coupler. What's nice about this is it tells you and it also shows you the icons. We've built the coupler functionality into the compass control panel. So you unlock that back wedge and then you unlock the front lock. Then you have 10 seconds to release the coupler out of the bucket. After those 10 seconds, after that countdown, the locking device and the safety lock will reset and then you can pick up the button, curl it, lock the wedge and you're done. So all of that coupler functionality is in the monitor. The way the pattern changer works now is we just simply hit the button and you have your choice between excavator pattern or backhoe pattern. So we're going to demonstrate that on this machine. Are you an excavator or a backhoe? So, excavator? So Greg is in excavator pattern right now. When he pulls back on that right hand joystick, the boom goes up. When he pushes forward it goes down. Now all he's going to do is by hitting a button he go, puts the machine into backhoe pattern. Now, that becomes the stick instead of the boom. So we used to have to leave, reach over and turn a valve. A lot of machines, you have to get out of the machine and use a tool or a wrench and change a valve. On ours, now you just hit a button. This button here is what we call auxiliary flow control or auxiliary flow adjustment. You can adjust the machine between one and 15. This particular machine has about 16 gallons per minute. Each one of these bars is about one gallon per minute. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn it up to 15 and hit okay. And at high idle, you're gonna see how fast this thumb opens and closes. It's because it's getting the full flow to the machine and to the tool. back in there, adjust it down to one, hit OK, and then you're going to see what took one second now takes about six seconds. And you get real fine control. You can actually change the shortcuts on the monitor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make continuous flow one of the shortcut buttons. I'm gonna make it button number three. That's the way it's set up inside our cab. So now when I go to the home, now button number three is continuous flow instead of quick coupler. So what Greg's gonna do is he's gonna hit continuous flow, 
and he's going to turn continuous flow on, and it says it's ready. Once it's, once it's ready, you just use the right hand roller, and you can set it in either direction and at any flow, and what you're going to see on the thumb is it's going to continuously flow, or if you had a brush cutter, that brush cutter would be in continuous flow at whatever speed you want it to be at. So right there you can hear it's in continuous flow, Greg's not touching anything and right now because we have a thumb on it's going over relief but he could do that same thing down or, or up either direction. When you turn this key off it beeps at you four times. You can either lock the machine or keep it unlocked. If you're on a job site you're going to be getting on and off the machine you would probably keep it unlocked. However if you're going home for the day or if you've got the machine in an unsafe position you don't want another contractor jumping on it you just hit the lock button. It gives you a one minute countdown. During that one minute, you can jump back on, turn the machine on, no problem. After the one minute, the machine is locked out and you need an alphanumeric passcode. Really what you need is a four digit pin uh, to turn the machine back on. And the owner can have their own code and set up to five different user codes for your different operators.